hello, welcome back to uh, Let's Race Grand Prix Legends, and here we are today, round 8 of the 1965 World Championship, getting towards the end of the season here, 8 out of 10, we are at the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are excited for this race, and I am as well, this is one of the, the most classic tracks on the F1 calendar, obviously still raced um, every year, I think only one year. Uh, was it not race? So up there with Silverstone and Monaco as being, you know, the really classic tracks of Formula One. And it's in this configuration back in the 1960s, an ultra fast circuit. Um, really no comparison. We, we were at Enna Pergusa last race uh, for the non championship race, and that was a quick track. But this one uh, with the straights, it has uh, is even quicker. And I really like at this track, it's got a good combination of corners. Um, so, you know, it's not all just right-hand corners, uh, and you got some slow corners and some really hard braking zones. We'll talk about those in a second. Uh, but the 1965 Italian Grand Prix, won by Jackie Stewart, his first ever race win, uh, came at this race in 1965. He won from his teammate Graham Hill, uh, and Jim Clark was set for third place but had a failure in the closing laps. Um, along with John Surtees in the Ferrari, and uh, I believe Dan Gurney was able to pick up that third third spot. Uh, this, of course, is the Italian Grand Prix, and of course Ferrari is the team that um, everyone is rooting for here. It's the Defosi, the, the uh, you know, fanatic Ferrari fans of Italy, and uh, they come out in droves to see their team win, and for that reason, there's actually... Uh, three other Ferraris in the grid today, so I'm the fourth Ferrari, um, and we'll talk about you know who's starting in a second. But why don't we take a look, uh, because it is towards the end of the season, and it's very important uh, at the points standings, and we can see there, uh, Graham Hill has got the lead right now from John Surtees and Jim Clark, who are tied in second with 33 points, and they're only one point back from Graham Hill, so this is really a through-wide race, and I really couldn't hope for a better uh, championship race right now going into the final races. Um, I'm sitting there in fifth place, 16 points, tied with Jackie Stewart. You know, I, I don't know if I'll be able to, uh, you know, take over fourth spot from Dan Gurney. Uh, he got the win um, last race in Germany, so it's, you know, I'm really going to need a good finish. But uh, I think I might have a pretty good car here today, um, qualifying one decently well, and uh, you know, it's all going to be about the slipstream and, and trying to trying to latch up with other drivers, uh, and hopefully I can, I can swing something and get towards the lead. I don't think uh, the pole time was overall that much quicker than my time, and you'll see in a second um, who's on pole and everything. So with only three races to go, remember we're dropping uh, races now, there's only the best, uh, I believe six races count. Um, see highlighted in black are the races that are being dropped lowest scoring race for uh, anybody with points and so right now obviously my next race to be dropped would be um, let's see uh, Zanvoort obviously where I had the spin and crash so uh, that would get rid of another zero points finish so if I can get a points finish today that'll definitely make me look better in the championship and we can see what we can do so why don't we take a look at the track here at Monza uh, really similar to how it is today. There's just no chicanes. Uh, you know, like a lot of these tracks, they added chicanes over time to slow down the cars, but here we have the track in kind of its original uh, layout, and it's just, it's a super awesome track. It's its very cool. Um, you know, the front straightaway here is very wide and very long. You can go three or four wide, as you s might have heard in, you know, the 19... Uh, 67 race had one of the closest uh, finishes in F1 history. It's three cars, kind of all um, side by side. And of course, we'll talk to that. We'll talk about that more when we're uh, in the 1967 season. But here, uh, you know, the first corner kind of just a, a slight lift. And then you come to the Lesmos, which are uh, you know the slowest corners on the track. Uh, maybe maybe the second slowest corners on the track. Uh, second gear corners for me. And. Uh, I have to get a good exit out of those because then you have this long straight here through Ascari, which doesn't have a chicane in it. Um, it's just kind of a gradual left-hander. Uh, and then the Parabolica is probably the trickiest corner. Uh, I can get caught out on braking, and I'll definitely have to pay attention, especially as we get further into the race, uh, to make sure I'm not out-braking myself uh, going into there. So we'll be running 12 laps here today. The Rio Grand Prix was 68. Uh, 12 laps will be a good amount of time uh, to see make things happen. Let's take a look at the starting grid here. We got Graham Hill on the pole, with Jim Clark in second, and John Surtees in third. So Ferrari uh, in third place. 
can see the other Ferrari in fifth. Jackie Stewart's in fourth, uh, so he's the real winner of the event. We'll see if he can match that here. And I'm starting seventh, uh, so I'm in the middle of the third row, which is going to be an interesting starting spot. Hopefully I can at least dispatch Dan Gurney or Mike Spence at the start and at least just have one guy to contest with going into the first corner. And we'll see here. Maybe with the extra space I'll be able to slot in because uh, there's only two cars in front of us. Maybe I'll be able to slot in somewhere and maybe pick up a few spots here in the start. Um, so that's, I think, everything I need to talk about first. And uh, so as we're getting towards the end of the season here, uh, we can look forward to 1966. And uh, I think we might stick with Ferrari for that. Um, you know, it's been pretty good to me so far. Uh, and stick with John Surtees as my teammate. And hopefully uh, things work out from there. So without further ado, why don't we get started uh, with the 1965 Italian Grand Prix at Monza. Alright, so here we are on the grid at the Italian Grand Prix. We got Jim Clark directly ahead of me. Let's see what I can do on the start here. Flag is up. We're underway. Uh, getting a good roll out there. Getting kind of between these two on the start. No, not able to capitalize on it. I think that's Denny Holm getting around me too. Not the start I needed here. So we go into the first corner, nice and single file. No issues there. And try to time this to get around home on the exit here. Stay right on his gearbox. You can see one of the Ferraris to the inside, right in front. Home having to back out of it a little bit, getting brake checked. Able to throw it up on the inside. Oh, I'm stuck behind Gurney to the inside of him as well, and the Ferrari, it's Bandini there, Gurney getting past him as well, was able to make up those two spots, those guys overtook me on the start there, up into fifth gear now, now we're going through Ascari, draft here, so crucial, I have, I think, home looking to my outside, now to my inside. Can't be dazed, must hit the breaking point. Cold tires going in to the Parabolica for the first time. And we're making it just stick. You can feel the adhesion slipping. Now focusing ahead to Mike Spence. Uh, missing my shift point there, distracted behind me. Got Dan Gurney all over my tail. This front straightaway is so wide really can't defend easily if someone has a good run on you. That's why you see such good finishes here. Um, it's just a lot of space to work with. Now into the first corner, just a slight lift and a downshift. Got Gurney behind me now. I have to watch him going into the Lesmos here. Don't want him to have any chance of passing. Block the inside goes to the outside and that's just not going to work around here. In that corner actually quite nicely even though I had the inside line. Now closing up on Mike Spence. Getting to his inside. Having to watch these shifts. You know, being at high engine revs the whole race, you really have to watch them as well. To the outside through Ascari. Not the optimal line, obviously. Mike Spence able to take the inside quicker line around. I'm great drafting him now. Going down to Parabolica. Brake. Down into second gear. Ugh. And a car come to my outside and one off in the dirt ahead. That looks like Hill. I'm getting boxed in by the Lotus there. Ugh. A lot of action there in the Parabolica. to avoid stuff like that. You have to watch out, you know, sometimes you make a move on somebody and uh, you'll get a move made on yourself if you've got somebody close behind. And with the drafting track like this, it's just not easy to lose somebody that you pass. Yes, I'm gaining on Spence again. I'll stick it to the inside this time. 
what will be the outside to this little left-hander. Back on the inside for the Lesmos. Maybe try to outbreak. Down into second gear car, wanting to break away. Ah! And Dan Gurney gets around me there. I'll try him back here through the second Lesmo. Easily done there. Can't believe he slid the car in there, that little gap. He's an aggressive driver though. Now, do I have the inside on Spence for Iscari? I do. Will he have the speed on me doing down the straightaway? It doesn't look like it. Looks like I was able to get Spence. He cuts up, trying to block off Gurney. Hard braking. The Parabolica again. Keeping it a little more neat and tidy in front this time. Alright. Heart is beating here. Crazy start to this race. I'm sure we're just right at the beginning. Take a look at the pit board here. I think I actually missed it. I think it's before the line. So we'll look at it this next time around. Now, I have to really try to concentrate not to lose this group in front of me. Looks like it might be Stuart at the end of the line here, so. Hill was able to recover from that off pretty successfully. Having a big moment there for the championship leader. Oh, this is so great. You have all the championship fighters right up front here. Through the second Lesmo now, just missing the apex there and getting very sideways. Easy sometimes. I found to lose the back of the car. It was actually on a pretty decent lap in qualifying. Um, I looped it in the Parabolica threw that attempt away. Coming out of the sky there, he had plenty of runoff on the edge. Use all the track you can to keep the speed up. Break at about 150 here, hard braking. If you're really pushing into qualifying, get away with breaking at about just before 100, but it's a little too much for me to try in a race. Here we'll try the pit board this time around. P6 with 8 laps to go. Not too bad. Start at P7. Definitely lost at least 2 spots there on the start. Able to make them back up. And now leaving that little group behind me kind of separating the gap here between them and the really fast guys in front. Really love more points, obviously, than one. Uh, especially you know, looking at who I'm competing with directly, Jackie Stewart. He's in front of me right now. And that's not going to fly. On running a little wide first Lesmo, not the worst. Uh, the second one is the one that's really important. The car not wanting to get to the apex like I'd like it to. Maybe use, maybe overheated the tires slightly. Some of those moves I was making early on, really pushing the car here. Hopefully the engine stays under me. Ferraris have a history of problems, especially during this era. Breaking a little later than last time there. It's so strange, the corner very, very much sneaks up on you. You can break with what you feel like will be appropriate, and it'll be too much. Of course, if you look going down this main straightaway here to the right, old oval uh, at this time I think still used for sports cars and stuff uh, but originally used for F1 as well kind of an interesting addition to the track it's a shame they had to get rid of it uh, obviously you know, they were thinking about safety in these days uh, ever so slightly of course this track is still quite awesome without the chicanes at least 
down into second gear now. Oh, I see one of the BRMs to the outside there, cutting back in front of the Ferrari. Good racing here in front. And this whole lead pack is together, no one able to break away. And their little dicing is allowing me to catch up here. We've got Bandini, the gray helmet, right in front. Close enough now, I should start getting a little bit of draft, I think. I think I'm a little limited in my fifth gear here. I wish I, wish I extended that a bit. I ran mostly alone in qualifying. Really notice, but riding the limit here. Down into second gear, sliding the car there through the apex. Back on the th back on the gas. Stretching it out a bit here on the front stretch. Um, be getting a better draft from the pack in front than I'm able to get just off of him. I see a car diving out in front there. That's what I want to see. The fans would love to see the three Ferraris in the top six. Not bad at all. Through the second Lesmo now, very much closing up on Bandini. I'm getting a better exit there. Looking to the outside. Not able to make it happen this time though. I'm duck right behind him again. Keep the draft going. Again, heartbreaking. Oh, the corner just scares me every time. And three wide up front. Get myself into the battle there. Right now I feel like I'm barely tagging onto these guys. But I'm definitely quicker uh, through the whole Lesmo section. I think that's really where my setup got me performing. Trying to make the most of it. I think Bandini backed out there in front. Oh, making touch. Breaking off into the first corner, hitting the wall. Uh, and missing a left rear suspension now. Ah, uh, defeat. Uh, I can't believe it was going so well and something happened ahead. Too many more laps to go, and I was in a point spot. I can't believe that's happened. Why don't we get out of the car now? We'll take a look at what happened there. Bandini checked up in front. I saw him, and I, I think he did twice and tried to make the most of it there. But trying to overtake him, and it just didn't work out. Just want to rewind the footage here. Wow, that's horrible. Two Ferraris making contact with one another. Alright, so we're coming down into the first corner. I'm looking to the inside of Bantini. He's, he's to the outside. And we touch and both fly it into the wall. I'm losing my left rear suspension. Obviously, massive damage. Luckily, not flipping the car. Uh, but big contact there. The Italian Grand Prix. Uh, I just feel terrible about it. I'll take a look from another camera angle here. So going into that first corner. I'm trying to stay below, and yeah, I just, I don't know what was going on with Bandini there. He looked like he was kind of rising up. Obviously, he's shaking his fist. Oh, and Dan Gurney behind him making contact there. Take a look one more time. Coming up behind him here. He's going to the outside. I'm looking to the inside. He just slows up a lot. And I just had too much speed. I was trying to think about passing him and I slid up into him. I'm going to say that's my fault. Um, 
obviously he's making an unpredictable maneuver there. Uh, but what what can you do? Uh, so we'll accelerate the time here and finish finish the race and see what happens here uh, with the final results. So we'll look Graham Hill able to win it from Jim Clark, so keeping his championship alive. Jackie Stewart in third, not matching his uh, real life result of winning, obviously, but third podium there. Uh, Denny Holm in fourth, Jaginther in fifth, and uh, Bonnier in sixth, picking up the last point. We're looking towards the bottom, so it looks like Surtees had a header go off. Uh, Dan Gurney had a gearbox, so making the contact didn't really uh, bring him out there. And then Bandini um, finishing 19th. Um, finishing dead last, 20th because of the big accident. You know, it was only a matter of time before it happened again. We went this whole season, uh, we had the one accident at the Syracuse Grand Prix there, that early uh, non-championship race, and you know, I've been taking it pretty cautiously since then, and uh, I'm sure plenty of you guys will have something to say about the incident, um, unfortunately there, uh, ending the race and just losing losing points I could have easily gotten. I think if I had just waited for the Lesmos, I would have easily had Bandini. And I could have looked forward more, and you know, Stewart was able to finish third there. Um, and he was just right in front of Bandini, so who knows what would have happened. Um, so that's it for the Italian Grand Prix. Sorry about the result, no, but I'm sticking with it. I don't like to redo races or anything, uh, so I'm sticking with the result there. Uh, and next, we'll be going to the United States Grand Prix, my home race, Watkins Glen. Uh, so definitely will want to bounce back from this and uh, make the most out of that event um, as we get towards the end of the season. Uh, so why don't we take a look here at the points. Um, so looking at him now, Graham Hill with the win. Uh, now dropping his Silverstone finish at one point. Uh, sitting on top with 42 points from Jim Clark uh, in second. So he's able to drop the Monaco race as well. And John Surtees is sitting at third now. Obviously not the finish he wanted. Um, it drops. So that's two of his drop races. Uh, we got two more races to go. And he's going to have to really uh, win at least one of these to, to have a shot at the championship now. Uh, looking further down, Dan Gurney uh, is able to secure fourth more. And now Jackie Stewart moves into fifth place with that uh, third place finish there. The four points really helping him out. Um, and obviously I'm not scoring any points, so I stay the same and uh, fall down to sixth now. Oh, but well ahead of Bandini still, so not doing terribly. Let me see there, actually, kind of funny, uh, Bonnier and, and Denny Holm pick up their first points of the season. Uh, I wouldn't have thought that just, um, you know, from thinking about them uh, not having scored points yet. Um, and our results expand a little more with the few one-off drivers we had there. Um, but anyway, yeah, so like I was saying, that's the end of the Italian Grand Prix. Um, disappointed, very disappointed. Could have been a better race, uh, definitely. But, you know, we learn rookie season, and uh, in 1966, we'll come back to Monza, and I'll have my revenge uh, with the faster cars as well, so that'll be interesting. Uh, so next up, uh, like I mentioned, the United States Grand Prix. Um, which I'm very much looking forward to, obviously. Um, and after that, Mexican Grand Prix, and that is the season. Uh, so until next time, uh, comment, subscribe, let me know what I can do to improve these videos, and I will see you guys later.